Uh, just want to welcome everybody. Welcome to T My Go Go's the one on one. I'm your host, Cato Hammond. Thank you for tuning in. Um, got a special guest with us uh, today, this afternoon, a brother who's no stranger to the Go Go music culture. As a matter of fact, as I read here, basically for decades, uh, he has been identified with the evolution of go-go music in Washington, D.C. Um, as a manager of EU Experience Unlimited, he witnessed the accent of go-go music. As a producer and manager, he, he interacted with all the popular go-go acts in Washington, D.C., which include Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, um, Red Essence and the Junkyard Band. He emerged as a respected advocate and promoter of go go music in a time when various political leaders were critical to the music and, you know, the elements associated with the genre. Um, and uh, I, I think it was around July 2001, um, he, he released the book, The Beat Go Go's Fusion. The, that was the title, The Beat, Gogo's Fusion of Funk and Hip Hop, um, a book that was uh, uh, co co-written with another author. But I would like everyone to, I'm so psyched, psyched here to have him on the special because we we're going to talk about some serious knowledge of, of Gogo music, uh, past, present, and future. So I'd like to welcome everyone to, right now to a brother to go by the name of Charles Stevens. Thanks for tuning on in. Man, thanks for having me, Cato. I am so psyched, and I'm ready to talk to your 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 guests. Okay, wonderful. Now you know what I, I got to start off by asking Charles. I have to start off by asking, what is your what is your title? How do I title you as an author, as a producer, as a as a um. And the reason I say that because I had the whole problem myself when somebody say, what do I title you as? <laughs> you do so many things that, you know, what is the best title when introducing you? Well, you know, I like, I like this, um, because that's what I've been. I mean, I, I started out as a social activist, you know, very active against, you know, stopping the war in Vietnam. I was very active in, in, in getting out. Americans in, in, in this country and and then um, you know I started working with young people and the reason I call myself a cultural activist is because right around the time I started working with uh, with EU I started to realize how important it was to merge our culture um, alongside our quest for equal for, for human and social rights okay and, and working the two avenues together. And so that, that's that's the title I guess I'm more comfortable with right now. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. I can feel that. I feel that big time. <laughs> I feel that big time. You're gonna yeah. sound like my man Tino Jackson shouting you out. My man. Yeah. You know, and you know Tino because Tino is a member of Experience Unlimited. So that's I'm right. Sure. That's right. Yeah. Um. As a matter of fact, you know what? As we we're, we're sitting here talking, and I want to talk about all sorts of things, but I. Could you kind of like take us back a little bit? Mm -hmm. Take us back mm -hmm. to the future. I mean, back back into the history of, okay. of when Gogo kind of came in place and when you got involved. Exactly okay. what was going on in the music scene? What was going on? Okay. Well, let me let me start up by saying, you know, I I moved to DC from New York, New York, in 1970, and um, when I when I first got here, um, again, I was very active in the social and human rights movement. And um, one evening, my best friend, Mars Johnson and I were at my apartment and across the hall, Andre Pops Lucas was practicing with a bunch of young brothers. And so 
we went over there and, and, and interrupted their, their rehearsal. And uh, those young brothers ended up being experienced unlimited. Sugar Bear was there, Donald Fields was there, uh, and a couple other brothers. And they asked if I would manage them. And 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 Cato, that's probably one of the, the deepest questions I ever faced because how could I tell them young brothers no? Because at the same time, like I said, I was a community activist. I was out there, a community organizer, working in the community. And how could I tell these young brothers that just were looking for you know, someone to work with them um, at that point in time. I mean, and so I said yes. And it wasn't the fact that uh, I wanted to be in the music business. It was the fact that I just wanted to work with some younger brothers and try to give them some guidance. Well, those young brothers ended up being experienced unlimited. And when I got into the, the, uh, the whole responsibility of being their manager, I had to learn. So I had to go to the, the dancers and the go-go's at the time. And as a matter of fact, the, one of my first educations, I was working uh, in Southeast, um, I think it was a Southeast neighborhood house, and these young kids would always say they're going to a go-go. And I said, going to a go What's a go-go? Now, I had just come from New York. We used to call what they called down here. Now, this is 1970, 71. In New York, we would just say, we're going to a dance, right? Okay. In DC, they were saying, I'm going to a go go. And it took me a while to understand what that was. And then okay. it was just the same thing. They just called it a go go. Uh -huh. and, and when I got involved with EU, um, the young senators, Black, the Aggression, Congress, those bands were playing at uh, LaFont Plaza. They were playing uh, downtown. They had. This big dance hall had three or four rooms at the time. And uh -huh. it was cool. and, and, and they were called go-go's. And and the young sister really the premier band in Washington. Okay. Uh, and Chuck was playing at the same time too, matter of fact. But without a shadow, without any doubt, the young senators, they were ruling Washington, DC. And okay. And they were playing the go-go. Now they weren't playing go-go music because the young senators, if you go back and look at them, and they were they were on their way of being the next uh uh Sly and the Family Stone or something like that, you know. Right, okay. They were a very okay. talented group. And most of the other bands had their different unique styles, but most of them played cover music, uh top 40, right? And, and right. EU. I actually probably heard the story. I started out trying to play rock music. And I said, brothers, if y'all trying to get some gigs, <laughs> y'all got to change up a little bit. <laughs> so uh, they, they changed up a little bit, but they kept that rock element, but they had to play the R&B to, to get their gigs. So that's really how I got involved. Okay. Now, you know what? You you, you jumped on something, and I want to, um, before we leave this, uh -huh. because there's kind of a, 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 a ongoing kind of kind of debate kind of thing going on now mm -hmm. where right. where there's a question of the the question in now is did Chuck actually create go go music now Nick, and I would and, and I'm glad you're here because I would like you to break it down because you know because we know and we love and I remember the young senators I mean they went on and done great thing I mean they right. even became a backup band for Eddie Kendricks. Mm -hmm. So I know the Young Sinners was big in that strong sound of the D.C. music. Um, Let me break it down. Like, I think I know where you're going with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So as you, as you recall, I said, down. the kids said they were going to the Go-Go. And at the Go-Go were the Senators, Black Heat, the Jima Ballroom was the place I was really talking about. Skating uh -huh. the Sound Service. 90, I mean, all these other different bands were playing at the Go-Go, which was actually the dance halls, okay, but they just call them go-go's. Right. Chuck Brown was also playing at, at these at these functions. In the in the mid 70s, what happened up ahead, the disco era came in. Right. And the DJs like D like 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 Funk and all the others started Maniac, they started getting a lot of the gigs. Maniac McCloud, you yeah, talking Maniac about. McCloud, a lot right. of the DJ, the street DJ, disc jocks at the time, because disco was starting to be popular, and, yeah. and the DJs were starting to, to really, they, they were cutting into our, our, our market. 
at, at right. the live bands. And, right. and, and Chuck saw this. And that's but, but Chuck had already already played this beat. He already he was doing something that a lot of those bands wasn't doing back then. Uh-huh. Kato. He his kunga player, after he did a song, his kunga player and drummer, Kimbo at the time, they would keep playing. Just keep okay. people out on the floor. All right. Yeah. And he kept this, this that 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 element was really a Chuck element. He did that. Now this is before he developed a beat, but uh-huh. That style was something that he did, okay? Okay. But when the disco came, Chuck, I think in his mind said, look, I gotta do something to keep working. And 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 that's when he talked about Mr. Matt developed the slow down beat and mm-hmm. and, 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 and you, you know he experienced with a lot of different drummers and then finally got foots and you know and 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 the rest is you know history. The point I'm trying to make is the actual go-go music is what Chuck invented all right now in terms of go-go bands they was like in the back in the day they were young like but they were not they weren't playing go-go music you know okay. they, they, might, they might have been playing at the go-go but they weren't right. playing go-go music chuck invented and developed go-go music okay. Which, yeah, I'm not a professional but the beat that chuck employed that's him Black Heat, The Aggression, Young Senators, none of them played all the music. And that was Chuck. And then after that, Red Essence, Trouble, the rest is history. Okay. Okay. Lydell, I see your question, and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. We're kind of going through a, a, a chronological time thing here. So uh, mm-hmm. we're going to get to that point because that's an important question he asked. So we, I just want to let him know we are going to get to that. But I want to have Charles bring us up. So we're talking during that time because here's something I remember Keith Holmes and some mm-hmm. Keith Holmes, who happens to be a cousin of Lil Benny. Keith Holmes, he's one of the best right, in the area. Right, trumpet player, and he played with a group back in the 70s called the Matadors. One of the best bands in DC. Okay. Now Keith, now Keith it tells me because keep in mind during the 70s, in 75, mm-hmm. I was 10 years old. Okay. So I personally saw any of the bands. It was at an outside type event. Right, right, right. You know, right. And mm-hmm. you're always going all over the place. Mm-hmm. Now, McKeith Holmes, who was very active at the time, said actually that beat was so uniquely Chuck that if you started playing it, people would say you're playing Chuck's groove. And people would ask <laughs> Chuck permission to play. Yeah, and Chuck be like, yeah, yeah, play my, you know, it was kind of right, right. like the streets. Yeah. Hinted as yeah, you playing Chuck's groove. Well, you playing Chuck's beat. But you, you know, know what Keith, I'm Keith, Keith was on to something because actually, Keith probably didn't share this with you, but a lot yeah. of the other bands, particularly like the Matadors, more you more, they knew what Chuck was doing, but they wouldn't do it because they thought it'd be cheaping out. You know what I mean? Uh, they really, you know, Chuck was really a dance band, and that was really what he was trying to do—get people to dance. A lot of the other bands were more creative. And I'm not taking anything away from Chuck, but more, the other bands were more creative. They were trying to be more progressive and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Trying to get people to dance. You feel me? And yeah. so a lot of the other bands knew what Chuck was doing, but they said, nah, we ain't gonna go that way because you know we want to be more progressive. We want to be more creative. And, okay. and um, yeah, so you knew that if you, matter of fact, I think Essence, went to Chuck and told him that they were going to copy his beat. And he said, go ahead. You know, Chuck was open like that. He didn't care. Okay. That's why I call Ressens. I said, if, if Chuck is the godfather of Go-Go, then Ressens is his firstborn. Okay. Okay. Well, he kind of <laughs> had Ressens under his wing, you know. He did. he did. He did. Yeah. He did. He did. He did. He did. Yeah, he worked with them little boys. Okay. Uh-huh. So, so, so as we progressing on, and during this time you're working, there there are basically three bands that decide, mm-hmm. okay, we're gonna go that route. Um, um, because one thing I do remember is just like you said, I remember there were bands all over the place, and I remember when bands started playing that go-go style of music. I remember other bands that didn't. Mm-hmm. They was like, they, no, they. Not, I'm not messing with that. And it's funny mm-hmm. because. 
all the it seems like all the bands that des, did decided not to go that route fell off, mm-hmm. and the ones that decided to go that route continued on. Right, you had like Brute, Osiris, yeah. Leadhead. I mean, you had some really fathers children. You had yeah. some really good creative progressive groups. I mean, these bands were really really good, man. But they were not going to play that beat, and so when 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 the smoke cleared, it was really Essence, EU Trouble, and then you know Mass Extinction from the other came, came along after that. But yeah, man, I mean, like, but th- that first crew we talked about, well, the Sinisters left town; they backed up Eddie Kendricks, but right. like other groups like the Aggression, the Ninety Fifth Congress, uh, Brute. Leadhead, all of them bands, they, they kind of like disbanded because when the disc, I'm telling you, man, when the disco era hit, it really upset the whole music vibe in Washington for a while. It okay. really impacted because you remember now we had the cabarets, then we yeah. had the weekly go go, like the panorama room, Northwest yeah. Gardens, Masonic Temple. The right, Tuna Ballroom was what I was trying to think about earlier. That probably. Which, which one? It was called Lejima Ballroom on G Street. Anybody out there remember the Lejima Ballroom? Lejima Ballroom was a big facility downtown, and they had like three or four different uh, dance halls. And you would okay. have three or four different bands, Cato, at the Lejima Ballroom playing simultaneously, playing at the same time. It was okay. it was crazy. Okay. Was crazy. Okay. All right. So EU. And this and this is the, so you started working with EU nineteen seventy pre years. Yeah, the pre, pre years. The pre years. Matter of fact, hey man, you open up, I got a commercial. Remember, I, this is EU's first album. It's called Hold it Free up. Can you see Hold it? it up a little high. Okay. It's okay. Called, okay. It's called Free Yourself, and it's just been reissued on vinyl me. I'm so proud of that because this is this is the band before they actually started playing Go Go. This yeah. album was released in 1977 on Black Fire Records, and this record company has just re- has just decided to reissue this album. And, yeah. and I'm telling you, for all of your fans out there, they should go on Vinyl Me and, and check this out. They would be yeah. astonished. They would be very surprised. At the kind of music that E was playing back in in, in that day, it, it's interesting because I, I I know exactly what you're talking about because uh-huh. I kind of when you when you had told me about it a, a minute ago, I shared it online and it was some awesome awesome information about them and okay. just pictures of when they were young. We said yeah. they look like they teenage. Sugar Bear looked like he like fifteen or sixteen. Or something. Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> you know how skinny he was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, 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 yeah, yes. Man. yes. Yeah, okay. He's called Verdine's. He's called Verdine's twin. You know, at the time, man. Ah, you know, man, that you mentioned yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did that little Verdine <laughs> afro back in the seventies. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, 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 so anyway, so EU. Now, let's just talk about 77, 78, around that period. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm going to shorten the story. Right. One evening, Sugar Bear came to practice. He had just seen Essence play. And okay. he came to practice. And, and I got to understand now, what was going on at, during this period is our gigs were starting to dwindle down. We weren't playing as much. Uh-huh. And Bear came to practice one, one evening and said, hey, man, we got to change our style. You know, he says, uh, you know, he had just saw Essence and they were killing it and and how people were reacting to what they were doing. And he felt that that the band had to to switch over. Well, you have some guys in the band, Cato, audience that were not feeling bad at all. They were not going to do that. So really, they they didn't want they want to continue on the path that they were on. And so they put it to a vote. And Bears, you know, faction or whatever went out. And as a result, that original band, um, some of the original members left because it was evident that just the whole style of the band was going to change. And and Bear actually emerged then 
as the leader of the band, and he's been the leader of the band ever since. But but I'm just going to show you how how deep that period was. Your audience need to understand that, and it probably wasn't just EU that was going through that transformation during that period. It probably yeah. other bands were having that same discussion, and and they probably broke up or whatever. And and EU didn't break up. What they ended up doing is uh, just changing their members. Right. And the guys left and some uh, new guys came in and then they just decided this was the type of music they were going to pursue. Just really, man, and, and uh, Chuck talks about it, you know, in terms of making a living, what he had to do to make a living. That's why he had to develop this this music, this go-go music, just so he can continue to play. And so yeah. he, he kind of like followed in his path. So it was it was it was a a, a survival thing basically. It was a survival right. thing, right? That's wow. right. It was okay. a survival right. thing. And and I look at man, and I'm gonna give out props to Essence because they really kind of nudged it, it nudged us, and I think they nudged a lot of the other bands because even Trouble during that period they were doing the same kind of thing that a band EU were doing, and then they right. they transformed themselves, you know? Right. Yeah. Hot Cold Sweat, I think, also. There was some other bands that did the make that made the switch over too. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you just seen everybody going that route, it seems. Right. Like. If he was gonna play, you had to. But you know what's interesting though, but the formula was still basically the same, Cato. They were basically still top 40 bands. They started right. doing originals later on. You know, yeah. but initially they were still playing top 40. But they were just implementing this beat. They were just a different style, of how they were playing. And then, as a result of that, a lot of the original material from Essence, EU, and the rest of the bands came from the street, you know, like the EU Freeze and Up Against the Wall and yeah. all that kind of stuff. That, that that was generated from what was happening in DC, right? You know, different you know fads or whatever, and and the bands listening to what was happening on the street developed the music based on what the, the people wanted. So would you agree with, in saying that, that I always tell people a successful go-go concert show mm -hmm. is 50% band, 50% crowd? Or no question. That how no, question. no question. It's, it's interactive. It's, it, it, it's you know, it, it's, 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 that's, that's the element. If the crowd is not participating, then it's really not a go-go. Okay. The crowd okay. has to participate in order for it to be a go-go. Okay, that that's the bis that's the big <laughs> mistake about it. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And and, yeah. and, it, and it makes me show. It, it, I'm gonna go to one of the questions that. Uh, let me if I can go back and find a question that um, Lydell had asked, which mm -hmm. is a very good question, and we can go back. Uh, he wanted me to ask you. Why do you, in your opinion, which is a, would have been a late on question, but it's good in this spot. Why mm -hmm. do you think, what does he say? Why, why do you think go-go music hasn't made it big in the, in the music industry as a whole? The well, you know, there, 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 there are several responses to that. The first one, I think it's kind of odd. The industry is lazy and did not want to try to understand what we were doing here in Washington. So they thought it was easier. What they tried to do with EU and some other bands, what they thought was easier is to switch the bands to make them more commercial, you know, because they really never understood what was happening here in Washington. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second part of that, Lydell, is that, and I, I don't like to say unfortunately, but the musicians in DC, they're just so wedded to their music, man. And if they playing go go, they want to play go go. They want to, you know, they want to play straight up go go, and without, you know, what I mean, without tilting it, you know, watering it down or whatever. Right. And, and they're very committed to that now. So if they got to sacrifice the big dollar to do that. They'll do that. I mean, that's just where they are. Right. The, the, right. the, the third, the third element is. I remember I was doing this radio show in in uh, in California, in Oakland, mm -hmm. and and somebody called in and they said, "Well, you know, I hope GoGo -Go never really goes international." And and that statement kind of hit me, Cato. I said, "Wait, what do you mean?" He said, "Because I think if it did, 
it, it would lose, you know, it, it would lose its element. It, it wouldn't have the same, it wouldn't mean the same. And I kind of oh, heard that. people say that. I've definitely uh, heard people say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of understood what he was saying. You know, he really like, you know, Chicago got the blues and, you know, New Orleans got their music, and that, which is true. And he says, so if Gogo ever commercialized themselves, it would not be the same. Truth to that. So it's to me, many reasons to Lydell's question. And, and I think if I was to sum it up, I, mean, I just think there's the, 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 the love that the folk in Washington have for the music and the fact that the people from who are not from Washington, truly don't understand it until they come to Washington and actually experience it. So it's it's always been a music, Cato, that it's hard to put it on a record or a CD and play it and get people from Detroit to buy into it, you know? But you take that same person from Detroit, you bring them to the black hole or whatever, now they get it. You know, you really got to experience it. So it, it's still, you know, like sometimes you go to that party with your boys or your girls, and you had a great time, and you run your friends who didn't go to the party, and you try to explain to them the good time you had, and then you look at them, they got that kind of like that look in their eye, like they ain't really getting it, and that's when you say, "Well, you had to be there to understand what I'm saying." Right. Same thing with right. the go-go, right? Right. You got to be there. I mean, it's really difficult for me to translate the feeling, the energy, and all that that goes on to a go-go, because you just got to be there. It's an so experience. It's I've, an experience always said, I've always said, my whole thing is, is I've always said that if if you wanted to get, I guess, go because go-go is an experience, that if you wanted to get it appreciated nationally like it's appreciated here at home, you got to take it as a whole experience, almost yeah. like like I don't know if you've seen the movie Leap of Faith with a uh, uh, um, that comedian, they Steve Steve Martin, mm -hmm. but you know they it was like the way churches take a big tent and That's they right. just go city to city or Universal Circus take right, a whole. Right. Thing. So they take they bring the experience to you. I said if Gogo -Go had ever had the funding or whatever to mm -hmm. have bands to take that meaning you don't take the bands you take some people with you mm -hmm. so to teach them how to mingle with the band right right you right because so i have never personally i've known a lot of people in the music industry who work i mean with labels and stuff um when Preston was working with with uh emi and they never got a there's not one person we brought to a go-go that once they finally get went there they said Ah, now I understand it, and right. they love it. Right. Every single person has always loved it. That's right. You, you, know, know. you know, you know, you hit on something about the big tent because I like and and maybe some of your your viewers and listeners understand what I'm saying. If they go to a Pentecostal church. I mean, uh, I mean, it's going to a go. It's almost like a Pentecostal church service because it starts at one level, and then by the end of the day, by the end of the, the night, everybody's sweating. Well, the same yes. thing as the you hearing the words and the singing and the, the music, everybody shout. So it's almost the same kind of energy, KO. I mean, I mean, it's it's phenomenal, man. What goes yes. on at the go-go. It's phenomenal. Yes. Um, another element I want to bring up to you is uh -huh. I want the early stages of of you know, as Gogo -Go just really just starting to blossom and blossom. Now I'm in my high school years. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and everybody is picking up an instrument. I mean, you got the. I mean, I was going to Duke Ellington at the time, and I would have to catch the X bus, so I'd have to pass so many. I would pass Woodson, and coming home from Woodson, I would see their marching band. And I would pass Spangon, and mm -hmm. I would pass whatever schools I passed trying to get to my school. Um, um, McKinley Tech. All these different schools and all these different people, kids who had instruments, and we kind of really got to blossom it with Marion Barry's uh, showmobile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I worked on the showmobile under uh, Raymond Gray. And yeah. <laughs> a lot of bands got to blossom because of that showmobile thing. Well, and, and, well okay, Kato, you, you, you just said a lot. And I think that maybe some of your younger listeners should listen to what you just said, because 
Go Go Music really owes its rise, mm -hmm. starting with the DC public schools, because mm -hmm. now Bear and, and 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 White Boy and them they came out of the, the schools playing. They went to school to learn how to play instruments, and they came out of the schools playing them instruments, right? Right. And then, like you said, so a, a lot of the older band members learned how to play music in schools. So the schools all had very, very stellar music programs. Yes. And then it was piggyback, because you mentioned Raymond Gray, yeah. with the Department of Recreation, they had the Ambassadors Band. And John Buchanan could tell you all about the Ambassadors Band. The I Ambassador, remember the Ambassadors. The Ambassadors Band was been like the best musicians in town. Everybody couldn't be in the Ambassadors Band. And that's one reason why a lot of the neighborhoods ended up with their, their bands because you had all these musicians, all these guys, these wannabes in DC that couldn't, couldn't make the ambassadors band, so they made their own bands. Yes. So then, yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah. then you had the showmobile. Remember now, you had two showmobiles, because you had the city showmobiles, then you had the National Park Service showmobiles. So it was two showmobiles going out simultaneously all over DC. Yeah, I mean, that, that being the one I'm talking about, that the one was our, when we had that summer youth employment, that showmobile was our summer job. That was your summer job. You got paid. Yeah. That's yes. right. right. Now, 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 on top of that, one element we can't forget, where did the bands play on, on, on Friday nights? In the school. At, in schools and rec schools. Yes. Glen Arden, all of them, man. I mean, yeah. all Plus, the high schools in yeah. D.C. So then you had, okay, so now you have high school music playing in their schools, raising money for a lot of time for their football teams or whatever. A lot right. of football teams didn't have the uniform, wouldn't have no uniform, had not admit for the bands, right. making that money. And and, and 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 so all that going on at the same time, Cato, man, it was, I mean, look, the music was was crazy. So I always say, if, if you want to blame somebody for go-go for music, you got to blame the DC uh, music departments and the DC rec department. Because they really helped to spread the music in and around Washington. Yeah. I mean, I, they, and I, now the fact that later on we got into the eighties and we started, you know, running against those problems and stuff, and uh, the school suspended having the bands play. You know, right. and I think that that really created a gulf between the youngins in in, in the schools and the mm -hmm. band. That's why I think that now one of the reasons why young people are not um, you know, they throw the, the, they're not, they don't embrace the music is because they don't hear it till they get or they get a, really a chance to experience it till they get to be older. But before we remember, it was all yes. ages, at all ages, man. We played in the parks, we played in high school, we had all age uh, venues, you know, no no uh -huh. alcohol, but everybody could be there from 12 to 80, you know what I mean? Experiencing. Yep, yep, yep different bands so that has broken down now now you know so we you know there, there's some things we got to work on but i think at one point in time we'd be able to to get back to the old days okay i want to get into and, and we lead right into it first of all just want to hold up a copy of, uh -oh. of, of the book that we're talking about okay you see, right. yeah, i got my i still got mine <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is the Book that was written by Charles and co-written uh, uh, by uh, Kip Kip Lornell. Right, right. And and um and Arena, I brought this up because it's like you say, and there there you you mentioned something that that's what we were able to do then, and we got to figure out what to do now. And there are right. simple steps. This is what I mean by what I said in the beginning. How you weren't just involved in it back then; you continue to be involved with today, with with ideas with plans of implementing activism yeah, yeah. towards even towards schools and programs and stuff. Can we get into right. that kind of stuff? Well, you're right now, as you know, I got Teach to Beat, which I work with, with an organization called Teacher for Change. And we got Teach to Beat, uh, wherein and people go could look at our website, uh, go go the beat is go go. The beat is go go dot com. Uh -huh. And teach to beat we take musicians, go go musicians into the schools and they talk about on well, two levels. One, they talk about the history of Go-Go. Uh, like I think even you come in and talk talk about that. 
and or they talk about yeah. the music theory of go go and Juju has been really good in Sweet Sherry, Sugar Bear, John Buchanan. And what we found out is a lot of these high school students, junior high school students, really don't know that much about the music. And it's right. really been very, very good. I mean, the musicians get a lot out of it and and the students get a lot out of it. And the teachers love it because that's one subject. When they come in there, they ha- they, they hold their students at rapt attention. They got their attention. It works really, really good. So yeah, teach, teach the beat. The other uh, thing I'm, I've been touting for quite some time is uh, recently, I mean, I love the fact that the community came together, uh, you know, hashtag don't mute DC and got right. really involved. And, and that was really, really good. But one thing, Cato, that I'm an advocate of economic development and the fact that yeah. local musician, local culture has generated a lot of dollars into Washington, D.C. proper. But yep. I still think we have not received our just due. And I think that, uh, and, and, and a lot of your, your viewers understand what I'm saying about this. If you go to New Orleans, you check into a hotel, you ask the concierge to give you a list of where to go to hear, you know, some of the music, he'll, he'll give you a memograph sheet of some of the, the hardest places to go. Right. But if you go to D.C., you go to the concierge and say, well, can I go to just hear some go-go music? You know, he's dead. It ain't nothing happening, you know? And we got we got we got we got to stop that because every mayor always says how much they support go-go and all that. But, you know, unlike Nashville, Nashville got clubs back to back to back where you can hear country music. It should be something similar in Washington, D.C. There should be a, a street or place where club where you can hear mm-hmm. different elements of go-go. Right now, go-go's been around so long that yes. you can hear jazz, go-go, you can hear young, I mean, uh, um, what is it called? Young and the sexy bell- or grown and sexy. The bounce beat, the bounce beat, the I grown and sexy. It's all different gospel yeah. go-go. I mean, yeah, gospel. It's all different elements now of go-go music. And, 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 and lastly, I think that working with the Department of Economic Development to come up with ways in which go-go musicians and go-go people who associate with go-go could actually make a living, whether or not, you know, we got to establish a venue where mm-hmm. musicians could play and, and, and where people can learn the art of, of, of running uh, facilities like the Howard Theater and all yeah. that, you know, getting yes. those kind of skills and getting into the uh, musicians union, learn how to be sound uh, engineers, learn how to be recording engineers, those kind of things, have re- rehearsal studios. So there are a lot of things that I think we need to do to, to enhance the music and make sure that the city, you know, I think puts up more than they are right now. I mean, I think they, they, they're at the table, but we got to push them, push them more. I mean, I'd like to be able to have a, a go-go way for sure. I mean, we had Lil Benny Way and Chuck Brown Way and all that. There should be facilities to back that up. You know, right. and, and it could be safe places. We ain't talking about going, going in there doing all kind of crazy stuff. People right now want to have a good time. When they have shows at the Hamilton now, they you never hear no no no, no beefs. You know, when, you know a Chuck Brown Band or Essence or EU, and you got other venues that are really nine thirty club. I mean, so our go go audience they know how to they know how to have a good time without doing that crazy. stuff. Right, so, I mean, right, it's, it's not it's not fair. So I just think that we gotta continue with our voices. Uh, to, we're gonna really make the beat, the music of of DC or the business of DC. We gotta and, and make sure the government gets our back in terms of venues, in terms of you know laws, and making sure that we have you know safe places to play, uh-huh. and that the, that there's. Like when you come into Washington, it, there's more brochure, there's more information in terms of what's going on musically, right. all of that kind of stuff. Right. So just like Nashville is a country town, well, if DC is a go-go town, I want the, the city government to work with us to help promote that. You know. So. Okay. Okay. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. <laughs> I mean, for yeah, real. Man. I know it, it, it. It's. 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 I mean, I, and I know that you know the. um the don't mute DC thing, 
you know, mm-hmm. the, the little thing that sparked it off, I think, you know, you woke, kind of woke up a giant. When, right, right. You know, that seems small, it would happen. It really isn't, and that's why it, it no. exploded no. away. You know, matter of mm-hmm. fact, they got another protest, uh, you know, demonstration going on today with, with Backyard playing in, in uh, 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 what is it, ABM and, and uh, even DJ Cool Nun post come out. Okay. So it's another demonstration. But I think, like I said, you woke up the, the sleeping giant who kind of felt enough is enough. You know, it may seem small to them, but the reason, the reason people reacted the way they did, because see, now you're touching on livelihood and you're touching right. on something that's been going on. If we're talking since the 70s, we're talking something that's been going on for over 40 years now. You know what that's I'm right. saying? I mean, um, I mean listen, I mean, Gogo is really the heartbeat of DC, man. It's for real. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is not fake. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's so you cannot take that away. Justification, all that. We have to be smart. You know, right. if they're going to justify, you know, our, our city, then we make sure that we're at the table to make sure they don't just totally bury it, you know. They cannot exactly. bury this music. You right. can't, can't allow that to happen. So, is it, so, so it's cool to celebrate. Okay, boom, the store was able to play his music, but don't think that, don't think that right. the right. mission is over. That's then, right. It's not over. It's not over because they're not because you got to keep them. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whoever opposes against it, they're going to figure out some kind. They're going to keep consistently trying to figure out a way. Okay, we can't do it this way. Then we're gonna have to figure out to do it that way. So we have right. to be resilient in all the areas. You gotta be you know, remember now they, a couple of churches have been have left Washington gone. You know, they've gone for you different reasons. Again? You said what now? Some uh-huh. churches have left Washington, you know, for different reasons, you know, because they've been gentle. Uh-huh. I mean, they moved out to the Prince Joe, I think Metropolitan Baptist is one of them really? that left their areas yeah, about 10, 12 years ago. Right. When I was okay. church. So there are several churches that have had to close or move because they, they, their neighborhoods were being gentrified. So, yeah, man, you know, wow. it's not just go go, it's across right. the board. Right, right. It's across the, across board. the board. Okay. Yeah. Well, currently, what's going on with you now? You know, as far as, <laughs> I mean, I know the ideas, is there so many ideas you still have going on? Like the whole Teach the Beat, is that still going on? Yeah, or? Just Teach the Beat is still going on. You know, we, we just put in another proposal for funding for the DC Commission on the Arts. I, I, I think, you know, if your, your, your readers and your viewers go, the beat is go, go, they'll see we're doing some really, really good things in, right. in the schools. Look, man, the last couple of years, I think, have been really positive for Go Go. I mean, the yeah. fact that, you know, you got a G League team that call itself the Go Go, you've had a Go Go Symphony, you had big shows out at the, uh, out there at Man uh, at Maryland, the harbor. I mean, so right. go go to the different kind of stride, but you know, we just can't be satisfied with these one up kind of things. The thing again, I think is is making sure that the venues stay open, accessible to go go musicians, and and two, I think there has to be a facility, uh, Cato. I mean, I really think that there has to be a facility that helps to nurture. Not only go-go musicians, but all musicians, mm-hmm. you know, and, and 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 keeping the music element vibrant in in Washington D.C. And, and training, like I said, training like in the go-go, we know, man, you got sound people can do sound lights, staging, promoters. So being able to teach them uh, at a higher level, so they can make a living, you know, mm-hmm. and do what they love to do. And, and 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 get into some of these unions, the musicians' unions, so they can make you know decent wages and stuff like that. I think these are some things that we gotta we gotta continue to hop on and make sure that that that, that uh develop. Okay, because that's what I was, that's what I go ask. Because I was gonna ask, what do you what did you say, or what do you think or say to those of us, and I gotta include myself, who who have a worry that the culture is losing its connection with the next generation. Well, again, I go back to the schools. Remember, we were talking about the schools. That's why I think Teach yeah. the Beat. But even more yeah. importantly, even with Teach the Beat right now, and I talked to Juju and Sherry about this, is is if we got to make Institute going back to the schools, being able to play for these youngins. 
so they can experience the music, you know, more closely. Yeah, I know, I understand, but I'm talking about even deeper ways when you and I were talking earlier, where it's it's cool to have, you know, um, the musicians that my parents and grandparents talk about come to my class and stuff and talk mm -hmm. to us, but it's, a, it's, it's awesome experience, but to make me want to be part of that experience like the youth used to want to be, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and, um, they, and that's the same it, stuff. It's too late because of music, because I know music in general is kind of even even you know uh, music across the board or mainstream mm -hmm. cut mm -hmm. out their bands. I mean, you know, you got a few selected like the Roots or whatever, but right. even even rap, they they aren't even even rap groups like they used to be. Yeah, yeah. Public Enemy, Wu Tang, uh, leaders of the New School Tribe Called. You know, everybody's individual now, so that's right, kind of right. that kind of fear me a little bit because you know. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't really have the answer to that because I think how this thing goes, it just continues to evolve, uh -huh. and I think it's going to continue to evolve. But I think just like jazz, the blues, and other genres of music have, have been around, I think yeah. global will continue to be around. You know, and it may. Right change here and there like the bounce or whatever but it's going to be there but i think your, your bigger question is how do we keep the youth involved and i think yeah. they got to feel it that's why i think having these stellar music programs in the schools is so important yes. because they got to be there they, they got to feel it and then they got to be more involved i think i even read somewhere maybe i be on one of your sites we even the young Kids now in school they don't really see themselves as rappers because they don't see there are not that many rappers that, that they could see in DC that they see as uh, mentors or they you know what I mean right. so okay. they don't even really have that you know okay aside from what they see you know on, online or on television that kind of thing so yeah. yeah I mean I think I think it's still open man I think you know working with the schools. And opening up our hearts and our minds, and working closely with these these youngers, I think you know, there's some surprises uh, ahead for us. I really do. Right, right, okay. So it's definitely it's definitely important to, in all kinds of ways, keep their youth in mind. I mean, they yeah, are the, they are the, they're the future. They got it. I mean, look, I mean, the other thing about this music, this music is it hits you, man. So at some point it's gonna hit them. It's just like gospel music, man. You you know you gonna feel it, and, yeah. and this yeah. music, you know, it, it, that's what it is. It, it 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 makes you cry. It makes you smile. It makes you dance. I mean, it just consumes your whole everything mm -hmm. once you get involved in, in 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 go go. I mean, so that that's that's the thing, man. And and I know it's gonna be around. Years ago, the city paper said. And I'm paraphrasing, you know, it, it's um, that that you know that the music would always be popular in and around Washington D.C. and and I think that, that that's fine. Yeah. Because I one thing I said I said in my book one one reason I think that Go Go kind of emerged in Washington because I think if you go back and you look at how disenfranchised. Uh, our city was it still is in terms of we couldn't vote you know you know we, we were half citizens if, if all of that and we just took a music and said man this is ours and we don't care we're going against the grain and 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 and, and we're going to throw everything we got and because you you figure man where did this almost this super soul super funk music come from mm -hmm. i mean with the, all these african rhythms i mean it goes back you yes. I mean? Yes. So really, man, we, I'm talking about all the things that happened in the last couple of years with with Donnell and gangers going to to Africa. Yes. You know, making that trip, connecting. Because Melvin Deal with African drummers and dance, he's always say that this music was coming out of West Africa. But I know a lot of the musicians at the time really didn't understand that. But it it it, it does. So mm -hmm. in Asia, it, it it's 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 taking us way back. We we went we went way back to Africa to get the drums right, and so mm -hmm. then the call and response a lot of that is from the church. So we just really 
united African rhythms and the church chants and put it all together and, and boom, go, go. I mean, right. merge. And it's something man, that really hits you, man. It's, 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 it's a phenomenon, man. That's a real positive thing for us. And, and right. I know these are going to keep it going. Like, like Chuck was saying, because it's going to keep going, going, going. Yeah. My man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and little Benny, man, I think about them, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. They, you, you think about little Benny. Yeah. Who is your, little Benny, come on. You say what? Uh, you broke I, up. I, boy, I mean, you know, little Benny was, you know, special brother. He was a special yeah, talent. Yeah. He really was. Yeah, it it was like it, it was like Benny was was born for this, you know, because yeah, no question, man. I mean, he talked about things like Reds. I mean, Reds and yeah. the boy. I mean, some of the Reds. talented brothers, and you know, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just mind boggling. I mean, there are a lot of cities that don't have the resources that we have musically, you know. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they 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 were like Detroit, you know, had Motown, which was huge. Which was mm -hmm. huge. I mean, I, I know we can't touch that in some areas, but they made their mark and they, and they went away. But the DC man, what, what happened here, the explosion, it, it just, it's right here. It stayed here. Sugar yeah. Bear, Big Tony, yeah. Davis, White Boy. I mean, these are guys that, that probably could go real around the world and back. And they just decided right. to make their mark here, you know? Yeah. That's a lot of love, yeah. man. It's a lot That's of love. Ain't true, and they scared to lose it, like you mentioned earlier. Because well, you, you, did you see the? And I was part of that. That that uh. I know, man. That you, 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 they got smacked around. They got smacked around. You know, they took the butt, came back. You guys were hating on them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, well, well. You know what? When it comes to that, you know what I always said about the EU and the butt thing. Uh -huh. I, I just think when I think. And that show that's a matter of fact, the EU in the butt era get, is a perfect example of uh -huh. what happens and how this area continuously evolved. Uh -huh. Because I think what happened when EU left and was you know on the road toward doing the butt, go go from the time before they left to the time they got back, go go had evolved and changed, yeah. And, and when EU came back. They were still that old EU we remembered. So you know how it is in DC. You got to be up with the time. You got to be with the big crowd. So mm -hmm. it took them a minute. It took Bear a minute to revent, reinvent or re redo whatever he had to do to get back in that mix. Because I, I think, but I think what happened from there is everybody else became scared to not leave, but to be gone that long and come back because. You know, everybody wants your spot. That's and right. That spot kind of, it ain't easy to get when you That's get right. back. You know what I'm you're saying? Right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I mean, come on, I mean, when, even with Chuck, having to Chuck a little bit. Yeah. Trouble, yeah. Having the trouble. You know? I remember Chuck used to think, I remember people, I remember Chuck used to think, man, they don't like me no more. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because. Junkyard, backyard, mass, they were coming on hard. Yes. They were coming on hard, man. The what band? I mean, all these bands started coming. I mean, they like, what? You know, so. They it, continue, it, it, and they still continue. I'm telling you, you got bands like, probably one of my favorite bands, new bands now, this band called New Impressions. And I remember some of them when they were kind of messing around young with that other group. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but. In other words, they still continually progress or right. evolve, whether people realize it or not. Some older heads are scared of change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, it may, right, right. It, it, it wipes them out, but it doesn't erase them out. It mm has -hmm. to to that tree, that branch. So, right, you know, right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, it, 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 look at man. I think it's strong. You got Belladonna. You yes. Got my girl Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. You, know, I mean, you, you got. I mean, it, it's. You know, it's 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 cranking, man. It's cranking, man. It's like, I mean, you you got what, what guy with the vibe band does. I mean, subtle thoughts. I mean, so you yeah. got fans that you know that do the grown and sexy crew. I mean, 
You got Marcus. There's something for everybody. There's yeah, something. The everybody. thing about Go Go, there's something for everybody, old and young. That's right. That's right. I mean, so you can get your flavor, man. You can get your flavor. So I, I'm just, I'm just happy. Uh, the thing I think it is is that um, I think the audience should sometimes lighten up and, and allow these guys and gals, you know, to be more creative to get their groove on. And if they they want to try something different, you know, cool. You know, I, I know there's a big discussion now about yeah. them playing cover tunes. And I think we ought to continue to push that. I think that there does need to be some more originality. Well, you, you know, know what I think that is? I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day. I think when you hear, like, some people complain about cover tunes, I don't think they're upset about the cover tunes, but you ever try to defend this music to people outside of the area? And when, you know, you're trying to defend and, 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 and brag about how your music is, and they keep coming at you where y'all ain't even original. Right. And you ain't got nothing to come back with them with. I think it's that. I think it's when you want your favorite team to be winners, you know, you want the best quarterback and the best wide receiver. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, yeah, we can do this and we can crush covers, but let's show them we can also do this. Because we can't. But you're right there to extend that argument it, because it also goes back to them too. Because a lot of these new, you know, so called hip hop artists, a lot of them, you know, they got beats, you know, they got riffs, you know, they you know what I mean? I mean, so a lot of the stuff they laying down is is not original either. Oh, of you course know? not. Of course you know not. I mean? So but so I mean, but so you know, I, I think we all have a way a ways to go now, but if you go back, you look at some of the stuff that them bands just do back, you know, in the 80s and 90s, man, you know, it's in trouble, man. They, you know, and the junkyard, a lot of them, man, you know, sardines, a lot of that stuff was was original, you know, it was original stuff that they came up with, you know, and, and right. crank. And they still they still play. I mean, come yeah. on. Junk still playing sardines. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, junk. 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 <laughs> Junk cranks, period. Yeah, they crank. They crank. I mean, I remember they, you know, they were they were, they were showing up playing on junk. Yeah. Oh, I remember the fr my, my first time ever seeing junk y'all play, and I wrote this in my book. Um, was at a at a at a mass extinction show, and mass extinction. And I'm think I'm guessing I'm trying to remember maybe in Northwest Gardens, but mass extinction played, and when they took a break. They let these little kids play. And they only play for like 10, 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? But the crowd was, you know, everybody was all hype over these little kids that was playing on these buckets and stuff and cranking. Mm -hmm. And then the band came back on. That that made, what year was that? That could have been like 1980, 81, something like wow. that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Bugs has been hitting it for a long time. I watched all them guys grow up, man. I'm just so happy yeah. for that. Yeah, Maurice hanging in there with them. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, man, you know, it, you know, we're family. Uh, we just need to do our business a little bit better, man. I just think we need to uh, unify on the business level. And, and, and I know we try to have coalitions, but I think we really need to have a business association that, uh, you know, that's professional that right. goes out there. Like you said, get, get, get the, get you, get your man. We got really have a business association that really looks out for musicians, uh, their welfare, their family welfare. Healthcare and all. Yeah. It's there. Healthcare and all. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, healthcare and all. I mean, right now, we, we really need to do that. And so hopefully, that, that's the next step. Next right. step is creating, you know, a, a, a business association that really oversees and looks out for these musicians across the board, Right. you know? Because it's too many, and like you said, I mean, you know, health care and, you know, livable wages and that kind of thing. I mean, do more our own, you wow. know. So, well, like anything else before we wrap up? I mean, anything else like to leave us with some jewels? <laughs> continue the music, continue. And, and 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 for your your, your audience and and for your viewers and listeners, man, support these musicians and 
I mean, the best thing about back in the day, the best thing about the Battle of the Bands, you remember the Battle of the Bands for real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Made an audience, the, the riff between EU Trouble Fun, you know, Chuck, I mean, all bands would go to the laboratories, and you know, I mean, they go to the Capitol Center, you know, the community. Yeah. Uh, 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 the uh, no, out there northeast, um, Constitution, I mean, the, uh, Coliseum, the Coliseum. I mean, you know, man, yeah, I mean, you know, shows, man, them guys. So, but they were pushed, and I think the yeah. audience and these bands got continued to each other to more perfection. And I right. think as a result, everybody benefits. Let's continue yeah. to push these guys to the next level. And and and, right. and and it'll be fine. And this continue. This, do not let the city off the hook. You know, do not let the city off. It's not enough for them to say, you know, go go is a heartbeat. They got to institute some policies. They got to institute some yeah. some avenues that really show that concretely. And that's you know venues. Right. That's you know different kind of. Uh, uh, um, um, things that help the musicians along the way okay. you know so we got to do that and, hey man and, love and, what you're doing man love what you're doing you know oh, man, and, you do. and, and this, is, this is good man i mean you know i i mean when you first started this kato long time man <laughs> my hat goes off to you so proud of you man you know so we, uh, you know yeah. you go, i, I go appreciate you always your support too huh? i always appreciate I, I say i appreciate always your support you and judah both and yeah. everyone you know. Yeah, man. Look, the thing is, um, and I, I, I was blessed enough, you know, like you said, I, I had other things I, I did. And um, so in terms of my interest in GoGo, -Go, it was really from the heart. I mean, I I did, really didn't make a living through GoGo. -Go, you know what I mean? I had other things I did to make a living. So what I was doing, for my, my contribution to this music and this art form came from the heart. When I chaired the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities, my role was to make sure that the rest of the city leaders understood and appreciated, you know, what the bands in the global community was bringing to our city, and to take it to a different level. That's why a lot of time when I was younger, and I would be represented the global community, Kate, I remember I would always have a shirt and tie on and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to present a different element. You know, right. I, I took that intentionally. I said, if I'm going to talk about the go-go, I'm going to be hooked up this. They're going to see me in a different element. And, right. and, and I did that, you know. And, 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 and so today, man, I still feel the same way. You know, I love this music, man. I, lo I love your people. I love my people. I love what we're doing. And again, I just, just, just encourage us to continue to push each other. And push each other with love, you know. Sometimes we get it um, gotta be done with love. Yeah, it gotta be done with love, man. And, uh, not that hate thing, but that love, yeah. you know. And you know, and, and that that's it. We're gonna we're gonna we'll get to the top. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Well, let people know again where they can get this book. Ah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, before go go, baby. This is it. This is it. You need to get this. Get this. Get this. Get this. It's called Show that Free Yourself, Vinyl Me, V-I-N-Y-L Me. Google it, and then you'll see that this is the album of the, of the month. Uh, and I'm very proud of, of the Sugar Bear and these guys back in the day that they established EU and got us off and running. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate, yeah. appreciate you, man, you know, taking your time. I know you 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 stay busy. Yeah, stay well, I Malachi just just peeped in. Hey, Malachi, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, Malachi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out, shout out, going out to Malachi. Shout out yeah. to Tyra, my man, uh, uh, Drew, Drew, okay. guitar player, that funky dude. Uh, uh, John, Kevin, Stevenson, shout out, and Ladell, and. Who else to Ula Tony? Ula Tony Ula, was Ula, up. Ula Tony shot it. Okay. <laughs> My man Dwayne Bullock. Of course, okay. Tina was up here. And yeah. anybody else uh, who tuned in, want to thank you. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Just, it, bro, man. Keep it real. Keep it. Yeah. 
Keep it going, man. Keep it going. I mean, yeah. Chuck is so proud of what these guys are doing and, and, and ladies and gals are doing. I know Chuck. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. smiling, man. We have not let him down. Like uh, Genghis says all the time that he says that Chuck told him, do not let this music die. And I mean, that's an awesome responsibility. But can, I mean, you know, I, I want Genghis to know we we cannot allow this music to die. Yeah. Yeah, the love we have for it. So That's right. appreciate that. Appreciate, appreciate that. that. All right. And uh, have a good rest of the day. I try to catch you in a little bit too. Okay. I appreciate on. that. Okay. I right. think you like Kato, man. I appreciate just having the chance to sit down and just and just kick it like we used to do back in the day. Always, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Okay. Right. I, I even wait, 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 wait. I even <laughs> think I even think about that time, remember when you, you uh, y'all had us over your house uh, when Chuck was over there? Oh, right, and, right, right. Yeah. And too tall, Steve, and everybody, we was just kicking it when y'all yeah, was out there. Yeah, yeah. But you know, <laughs> there's some stuff we didn't even get a chance to talk about, like Malcolm X Day and all that. So I got to come back. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Malcolm, yeah, because you was all part of it. So, no, wait a minute. I got just right quick the Malcolm okay. X Day thing. Because somebody was just asking about that while we don't have those. You were part of that Malcolm X, putting that together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting all that together. Yeah. And how, how can we go? Is it possible for the city to go about putting that kind of stuff together again? Well, I, th I think it's definitely definitely possible, and, and it's a new day. Now, you got to understand that Malcolm X Day emerged uh, out of activism um, to bring the free, you know, South Africa, the free Africa, and at the same time, begin to look at the issues that were that were influencing our community. So we brought out different political leaders to try to influence and, and activate particularly young heads. I mean, so Malcolm X that we intentionally brought out thousands, thousands of young people. And then we yeah. brought out Jesse Jackson, Public Enemy, and say, look, you know, talk to them people. One, one, one of my proudest moments, man, was when um, Betty Shabazz, she came to Malcolm X Day, she got out of the limo, and she was with Dr. Ben Chavers, and she looked around. And she said, Malcolm would have loved this. She said, wow. you love this because this is a common people. These are the everyday people who hear his message. And so yeah. my thing is like today, we, we know we have different issues that impact our community, and we need to call this, work together, utilize the groups that we did back then as a way to get people out and then have your serious political activists, your serious government, you know, office holders, they're working with the community, whether or not it's access to education, access to housing, access to jobs, you know, working with them, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what really made Malcolm X Day, the fact that we brought the government, the government leaders directly to the people. And then we set up, you know, we had booths where people could get the information they needed, you know, and all that kind of stuff. We know they came from the music, but the sometimes, man, you got to offer it in such a way where people get what they want, but at the same time, you can get them what they, you can give them what they need. And no doubt. I think that now um, there are a lot of young folk in D.C. You got a lot of, you know, you know, very good musicians, artists across the board. So it's ways to bring people together. You got to understand what we did back then impacted back then. They got to bring together. A, a, a different kind of element to impact today. So it may not be right. now next day. It may be a whole different configuration. Right, right. You see what I'm right. saying? No, no. But, it, but it still needs to evolve. Right. And I, and I, I like that because we had, you know, after the Liberation Day, Malcolm X Day, and there were other, it was still, they still did a Martin Luther King uh, Jr. parade. There are different elements they still do, but we still got to always have those community events to impact, to educate, that mobilize and, 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 and touch people. So yeah. it's my hope, uh, Cato, that somebody out there listening, you know, gets that and, and, and finds a way to impact. Because for Malcolm X Day, man, we were young. We had to figure out how to work with the city, how to work yeah. with the federal government. And we were bringing in go-go bands. How do yeah. we do that in Southeast? Yeah. And, and, you know, and then at the same time, we were saying, look, we don't want no police present, no no big police. So we had to bring in brothers and sisters to act as marshals. Right. We still had, you know, different crews in DC. I mean, we were not stupid. We knew it was different crews. So we yeah. had to have brothers and sisters who knew the crews 
who could, you know, chill them out, make sure that, you know, things didn't off, you know. And for the most part, we handled that. Every once in a while, there'd be some stuff that went down. But for the most part, man, I'm proud of how we handled that stuff. And we handled yeah. it ourselves. And that's what I'm thinking that we, we still could do that. We still have the brains, the the, 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 the mental power to, to make these things happen. So right. I'm just throwing it right. out to folks who are listening, looking at us today. You could bring it about. Utilizing again the different, I'm telling you, the different musicians, the artists, the politicians, your activists, bringing them together to impact, you know, our community for on, on a positive level. I dig that. Appreciate that. Okay, man. I totally appreciate that. <laughs> this, is great. this is good. This is good. I just yeah. love this, man. Yeah. So just, and, just and, and, and Malachi, yeah, and Malachi, thanks for ask, answering that question that Tyra asked. Because Tyra came in late. She didn't get the introduction. So okay. Okay. She played I can get that introduction. Right. Well, Tyra, Tyra, Tyra's a strong member uh, for Team I Go on for years. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell us, say, hey, well, you know, you know yeah. I've been been in and out, but I know the folks have been around, know what we do, and and that we we're here, man. And uh, what you gotta do is hit me up, you know. Be glad okay. to contribute. Glad to okay. contribute. Okay. okay, cool. Totally right. appreciate that, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. All right. Thanks Get a lot, the man. Opportunity to talk to your folks. Okay. All right, man. Okay. All right. Have a good one, man. Okay. All right. I love you, man. Okay.